Welcome to the Qatar Robotic Surgery Center. We are very proud to show you around in our new facility. We have a room which we call the VR simulation area, which is a room which we use for uh, simulation trainings, mainly in uh, minimally invasive surgery. Uh, it has three virtual simulators in there. The core part of our center consists of three different theaters. We have a smaller theater on the left hand side where you already see one of our surgical robots. That theater is what we call our telementoring theater. And telementoring actually is a quite new principle uh, where we uh, are going to have the mentor or the trainer being abroad and the trainees here. So what, what, what is unique about this theater is that we're going to have a high bandwidth uh, live link to operating rooms uh, abroad, for instance in the United States, UK or Europe. We will have the trainer, who is an expert surgeon, uh, in his own operating theater, together with a patient or without a patient, who can train our trainees here in the Qatar Robotic Surgery Center. We can also reverse this and do this the other way around. We can move one of our robots into this theater, we can have the trainee working on the robot, and we can, we can have the trainer abroad seeing the same 3D images as what our trainee is seeing and teaching him how to do his surgery, correcting him uh, by giving him indications. So this is actually um, quite a new innovation where we can send 3D images uh, together with voice, together with 2D images uh, across the ocean, both ways around, uh, and we can use it for making our uh, training sessions more efficient uh, and we can include more, more than one trainer from different parts of the world in the same training. We think that adds a lot of value to surgical training. The main theater is here centrally. Uh, That's the theater which we will use for uh, training of larger groups. We have a surgical robot obviously in the center uh, of that theater. We also have four LCD screens on the side to show information, to so show surgical videos, to show PowerPoint presentations. And then the most important thing is centrally we have what, what, what you see right now is a screen, projection screen. We have a 3D projector uh, right on top of the ceiling so we can show to our trainees 3D videos where they really see the surgical field in 3D as you can see it on the robot. So uh, what you see behind me is actually one of the two surgical robots that we have available in Qatar Robotic Surgery Center. Uh, as you can see the surgical robots uh, consist of three different parts. The part right here is what we call the brain of the robot. It uh, has obviously a, a 3D screen here which shows the surgical field. It also has uh, software and hardware uh, for image processing, uh, etc. Um, a more important part here are actually the arms of the robot. As you can see, the robot has uh, four arms, which uh, are actually two surgeons then. Um, this is the bed where the patient is positioned and these arms actually do the real surgery. Now, still the most important part of the robot is this part. That's this, what we call the surgeon console. The surgeon is very comfortably seated here and does all the movements inside the console uh, with his hands while he has a 3D image of the surgical field. Those movements of the surgeon are translated in uh, movements in the, of the arms uh, of the robot and that's why the robot is the, why the surgeon is actually entirely controlling uh, the surgical uh, movements. Right now I am uh, seated at the surgeon console of uh, one of our uh, robots. So um, you can see that I'm, I'm comfortably seated um, and my head rests uh, in, a, in, in a, a screen where I have a 3D vision of the surgical field. Uh, when I move my hands, this motion is translated to the arms uh, of the robot, which are then um, working inside of the patient. Right now, obviously, I'm not working with a real patient. I'm playing kind of a game. Um, as you can see, the, the, the plastic uh, model I'm playing with is quite small. Um, also, the rings are very small. But because we have a 3D camera and a very high quality image, uh, it's relatively easy uh, to grab rings to place them on, 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 on top of one of the spikes. Uh, so you can imagine that a surgeon 
using this in a real surgery can perform surgeries with a lot more precision and perform very difficult um, difficult surgical tasks on a lot, lot easier way than he could do in normal open or minimally invasive surgery. So now I'm, uh, I'm working on one of our three virtual uh, simulators that we have available in, in the Qatar Robotic Surgery Center. Uh, so those virtual simulators, as you can see, are a 3D uh, simulated uh, surgical environment, uh, which is uh, used for training purposes. So um, th this is a, a typical simulator that is used for training in uh, minimally invasive surgery or keyhole surgery, where the surgeon uh, only has access through a few very small incisions in the body of the patient to uh, the area where he wants to, he wants to work. Uh, you can understand that it's quite difficult for a starting surgeon uh, who's used to doing open surgery to work uh, in this, uh, under, under these restrictions. These uh, simulators uh, we have available are a tool that help the surgeon uh, to learn how to do his surgery in this new way uh, by training them in a virtual environment before they go and train on animals and before they actually perform surgeries on patients. Mr. Jan Nunes, thank you so much for taking the time for this interview and we'd like to know about the Qatar Robotic Surgery Center. When did it start? Well, actually, the Qatar Robotic Surgery Center is an initiative of uh, Her Highness uh, Sheikha Moza. Um, she had the idea of starting um, a center or an activity in robotic surgery when she was visiting Imperial College in London, uh, when they had their centenary in 2007. Uh, she visited uh, a very important department uh, in Imperial College where, where they do a lot of research and development in uh, the field of robotic surgery and uh, she saw the potential of the technology for her country, for Qatar and for the Middle East as a region mm -hmm. and therefore she decided uh, to task QSTP, Qatar Science and Technology Park, uh, to, uh, to establish a center uh, in this field. So we'd like to know about the missions and objectives of the center. So the Qatar Robotic Surgery Center is actually doing three things at once. In the first place, uh, we are a training center. So we want to train uh, surgeons, nurses, uh, hospital staff, we want to train hospital management and we want to train researchers in robotic surgery. Um, our second activity is doing technology development. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, have a, we are establishing currently a small group uh, who does uh, research and development activities in the field of medical robotics and related areas. Uh, very important in that aspect is that we want to work with local and international partners. So we have already uh, two collaborations with, uh, with local partners, Qatar University and Texas A&M, mm -hmm. and we are actively seeking to expand it to, to more local partners like Will Cornell, Hamad Medical, mm -hmm. and uh, to international uh, partners like Imperial College in London, uh, American University of Beirut, mm -hmm. universities in the US and in, in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, then our third activity is actually demonstration of new surgical technologies. Mm -hmm. So we have a very nice facility as you, as you have seen. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to use this facility to demonstrate uh, exciting new technologies in uh, the field of surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, and we think this is a unique opportunity both for trainees mm -hmm. as well as for companies to, to be able to show their new inventions to uh, surgeons. Uh, the center employs high-end virtual reality surgical simulators. So for our general public who really don't know what this is, can you please highlight on the simulators and what they do? It's with a lot of pleasure. So the surgical simulators is actually, uh, you can compare them with a kind of a PlayStation, uh, which is used not for playing around, but which is used for the purpose of training surgeons. Mm -hmm. uh, the surgical simulators we, we have here are focused on what they call minimally invasive surgery or keyhole surgery. Mm -hmm. So actually that is a kind of surgery uh, which is opposed to open surgery mm -hmm. uh, and only makes a few small holes in the human body and the surgeon does the surgery based on those uh, small incisions. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a technology which has a lot of advantages for the patient mm -hmm. but it's very difficult for the surgeon to learn how to do minimally invasive surgery mm -hmm. and that's why uh, we train them on uh, surgical simulators. Those simulators are actually a 3D simulated environment, a computer model uh, which has um, force feedback so the surgeon if he uh, 
pull something or cut something, he actually feels the pressure of the tissue he's cutting or pulling. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a very uh, sophisticated tool for training surgeons how to do minimally invasive surgery. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is only one part of uh, the training. Uh, the surgeon has to be trained on animal lab. Mm -hmm. uh, he has to be trained on, 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 trained is a bad word, but he has to practice on uh, real patients before he really becomes uh, an expert on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is certainly an important step. Mm -hmm. And the unique thing about um, us being a center in surgical simulation mm -hmm. is the fact that this is a technology which is used a lot in the United States and used a lot in Europe, mm -hmm. but it's not used a lot in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So um, we're actually the first center who uses it extensively in uh, trainings in the Middle East and mm -hmm. we think that's an important asset to Qatar and to, to the region. How has robotic surgery, uh, the, the center, how has it created or will create an achievement in the field of medical surgery? How do you think that is possible? Um, well, I have to explain you one small bit first. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I already told you that um, the evolution of surgery mm -hmm. has started obviously with open surgery, what we all know, uh, which, which, is, which, is, which is fine, but which, is, um, uh, let's say which causes a lot of injury to the body of the patient. Mm -hmm. And in recent decades, minimally invasive surgery has been developed, mm -hmm. which is a lot better for the patient because you only uh, use small incisions to do the surgery, mm -hmm. but obviously it's a lot more difficult for the surgeon to do the surgery and to treat the patient uh, in minimally invasive surgery. Mm -hmm. Now, robotic surgery, is actually an invention which is a lot more recent, it's only on the market for 10 years, mm. uh, more or less, um, which is a technology which also does minimally invasive surgery by using a robot or a master-slave system. Mm. And actually, this robotic surgery makes it a lot easier for the surgeon to do this very difficult minimally invasive surgery. Mm. Um, it has the benefits for the surgeon that um, he has a 3D image of the surgical field, mm -hmm. he um, can uh, zoom that image so he can see things 10 times larger than mm -hmm. they are in reality mm -hmm. and he can also scale his movement. Mm -hmm. So if he moves his, uh, his hand 10 centimeter, in reality he can make sure that, that the robot only moves uh, one centimeter. Mm -hmm. So those are important achievements which bring about that robotic surgery is a lot more safe for the patient. Mm -hmm and it causes a lot less injury uh, to the patient and the patient has to um, recover for a much shorter period. Mm. If I can give you one example about yeah. this, what actually happened here in, in Qatar in uh, Hamad Medical Hospital mm. is that uh, one of the, the surgeons uh, where we collaborate with, his name is Dr. Abdul Wahed Al Mullah, he's a cardiothoracic surgeon, mm. um, he has done several uh, surgeries uh, which were beating heart uh, coronary artery bypass surgery. So actually it's a, it's a minimally invasive surgery mm -hmm. where he does a bypass of one of the arteries uh, to the heart. It's a very, I've, I've seen a few of those surgeries, it's a very difficult surgery. It's certainly very difficult to do that uh, minimally invasive, mm -hmm. but it, doing that with a robot has tremendous advantages for the patient. Mm -hmm. uh, the patient stays in the hospital after surgery for two or three days, mm -hmm. and then he walks out of the hospital, while if you do this in open surgery, mm -hmm. where you have to make a very large incision in the body, mm -hmm. the risk of infection is a lot higher, and the patient will have to recover in the hospital for several weeks, and has a very uh, a much longer uh, recovery period at home before he's f uh, back uh, uh, back to normal. Mm. Okay. So, is it applicable to all surgeries? No, it isn't. It isn't. Uh, robotic surgery is applicable to uh, soft tissue surgeries, and it is mainly developed for urology, okay. uh, for uh, cardiothoracic surgeries, mm -hmm. and for gynecology. And gynecology is, is relatively new, but it's growing. Uh, very fast. Now in recent um, years and months uh, the surgery is also being developed for ENT and that's ear, nose and throat surgeries where they actually um, have the robot operate through the mouth of the of the of the patient. Mm. Um, so it is an it is an exciting technology, it is uh, quite young there's a lot of development going on in new procedures, new applications, improvements of the robotic platform. Okay. And my opinion is that we will see a lot more 
uh, of robotic surgery in, 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 in the near and, and more distant future, mm -hmm. uh, but right now it already has tremendous applications. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, in urology, the most important uh, procedure is prostatectomy, which is prostate removal. Okay. Um, in the United States, 60% of all prostatectomies are already performed countrywide by using a robot. Mm -hmm. So basically robotic surgery has taken over uh, that procedure already in the United States and we expect to, to do it exactly the same in uh, Middle East and Asia. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned earlier that the center would be doing demonstrations for surgical technologies. Can you highlight on that please? So um, as, as, as I mentioned we have, a, we have a very nice center here mm -hmm. and uh, our Two, two other activities are training, which means that we will have a lot of trainees, a lot of surgeons, nurses, uh, hospital mm -hmm. staff uh, in our center on a regular basis to become trained. Mm -hmm. Our second activity is technology development. So mm -hmm. we, we have a profile of a center uh, which, uh, which contributes to advancement in medical technologies. Mm -hmm. um, now the third activity is demonstration and we think with those two other activities this complements perfectly well mm. uh, so we are we are actually uh, looking for collaborations with companies who want to demonstrate their newest technologies their newest products in our center mm. who want to show it to our trainees and who eventually want to organize events in our center using our network using our infrastructure mm. uh, to demonstrate uh, their 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 products and technologies mm. now we do not intend to become uh, a commercial organization. We, 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 we're not a, a, sales, um, a sales arm of distributors of uh, surgical technologies and we never want to become that. Mm. Uh, but we think we have a quite neutral uh, position uh, in, in, in the field which gives us the opportunity to introduce um, surgeons and potential future users to the newest technologies, give them the opportunity to test them, to play with it and form their own opinion and we have a neutral stand. We can just offer the platform but we're not, we're not doing sales for uh, distributors or, 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 uh, um, or producers of, uh, uh, of surgical technologies. Mm -hmm. I do think the center is close to being the region's large surgical simulation facility. Um, it's very difficult to obtain exact information about this, but I think we currently have uh, three surgical simulators uh, in our facility, uh, which are being used for training. We have uh, the plan to purchase six additional of those simulators. I am very sure that with nine simulators in total, we are going to be the biggest simulation facility in surgery uh, in the region. Uh, I'm quite convinced that right now with those three simulators we are already one of the biggest uh, in the region. Okay. Do you think one day robots can replace human surgeons or can, be, can they pose a competition for human surgeons or both will complement each other and none will cease to exist? The surgical robots as they are today, mm. they Actually, the robot is a, is a wrong term. Actually, it is a master-slave system. Mm -hmm. And that means that the surgeon is the master mm -hmm. and the machine is the slave. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work without a surgeon. You need to have a surgeon who actually uses the machine in order to perform the surgery better. Mm -hmm. So actually, what, what, what is created by combining a surgeon and what we call the robot, mm -hmm. you create a super surgeon. Mm -hmm. That's actually what you're doing. Without a surgeon, it doesn't work and it will never work. Mm -hmm. So my final question, I know our viewers are seeing this uh, robot behind you, so can you tell us uh, more about it, how, it's, how it works, for which surgeries it performs? Well, the, the robot you're, you're, you're seeing uh, behind me uh, actually consists of three parts. The part on the left-hand side is uh, what we call the brain of the robot. It has all the software in there, it has all the uh, 3D uh, visualization equipment, etc. The part in uh, the middle is the part where you see the, the surgical bed, uh, where the patient is going to be uh, positioned mm -hmm. and you have the four arms of the robot who actually perform the surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on the right hand side um, there is the surgeon console. So the surgeon is going to be seated mm -hmm. on the console uh, and is going to perform the surgery. He's controlling everything that's happening uh, on the patient. Mm -hmm. uh, he 
is, is, is seated very comfortably and he rests his head in a 3D console where he sees a 3D uh, image of the surgical field and therefore has a very, very comfortable way of doing highly precise uh, surgeries. Mm -hmm. So I know also many of our viewers would like to know the relevance of the center to Qatar. How can it be an added value to, to the country? Well, I think uh, you should see the added value of the Qatar Robotic Surgery Center in uh, different aspects. Mm -hmm. In the first place, what we are doing here is something unique in the region mm -hmm. and unique in the world. Mm -hmm. We are creating a center of expertise in Qatar together with our local and international partners, which are very important for us. Mm -hmm. We want to really build um, Qatar into a hub for excellence in robotic surgery. Mm -hmm. I know that also Hamad Medical Corporation has the same vision to build their expertise in um, clinical practice of robotic surgery into uh, something which, which, uh, which is respected all over the region and all over the world. And mm -hmm. I think they're, they're, they're well underway in realizing that. Mm -hmm. Now, what we contribute as Qatar Robotic Surgery Center to Qatar is obviously we're creating in a very small but very promising uh, niche market and niche uh, activity, we're creating something in Qatar which is relevant on world level, which, which is unique on world level. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, Qatar will become important in that specific uh, niche market of surgical robotic technologies. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's one, that's, that's, let's say, more the economical uh, relevance of QRSC for uh, Qatar. Mm. Uh, the more social uh, relevance of, of Qatar Robotic Surgery Center is obviously that we will uh, push and drive clinical implication of robotic surgery in the hospitals in the country and in the region. Mm. And this will bring about that patients are treated better. They get the best uh, care mm. that is available worldwide by using robotic surgery for certain applications. Mm -hmm. And we think that we, we, together with our clinical partners like Hamad Medical, are already realizing this right now and are already bringing uh, better care to patients in this country uh, mm -hmm. right now. We'd also like to know about the partnerships the center is going to take, as you mentioned earlier in one of the, your answers. So please highlight on the partnerships that you plan to uh, perform in the future? That, that's a very good question. Um, the fact of the matter is that uh, Qatar Robotic Surgery Center and, and, and QSTP realizes very well that this center mm -hmm. cannot work on its own. If we attract the best people all over the world to come and work here, mm -hmm. but we don't cooperate with local partners, mm -hmm. we will be at best an island of excellence mm -hmm. in, in the country, but we will not really generate uh, a lot of value for the country. So that's why in all of our activities we actually have a very active uh, partnership approach. In technology development that's very obvious. We um, have already submitted two projects in the very early stage uh, of our center with the Qatar National Research Fund. Both projects are with local partners. One of the projects is also with an international partner, that's American University of Beirut. Mm -hmm. And we uh, intend to extend that uh, in the next uh, round of Qatar National Research Fund by submitting a lot more projects with different uh, partners in Qatar. We are speaking with Will Cornell, we are speaking with Carnegie Mellon, we are speaking with uh, Hamad Medical Corporation and also extend international collaborations by working with Imperial College in London, by working with uh, Canadian universities and by working with a lot of other top universities and hospitals uh, in the world. Mm -hmm. um, for training we also have a very active uh, partnership approach. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the first things we did, uh, even before uh, starting to construct this center here on the ground, is collaborate with Hamad Medical Center on training six of their surgeons mm -hmm. to become top experts in robotic surgery. Mm -hmm. we, did, we didn't do the training in Qatar because we didn't have the center yet, mm -hmm. but we trained them through our international partners uh, Imperial College in London and another training institution in France uh, to become experts in, in the field mm -hmm. and as a result right now, and that's not our credit, that's the credit of Hamad Medical Corporation, mm -hmm. um, there are already uh, up to 40 surgeries using the robot that have been performed in Hamad Hospital right now mm -hmm. and uh, the surgeons that we help train are actually becoming experts step by step in mm -hmm. using uh, the surgical robots. Mm -hmm. um, 
Now, in training we will also work with international top experts and that's actually the vision of Qatar Robotic Surgery Center. We do not want to be just a training center, mm -hmm. we want to provide our trainees with the best training that is available. Mm -hmm. And in order to do so, we realize that we have to attract the best trainers. Mm -hmm. So we will work with international top surgeons in order to provide uh, top training. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we're, we're, um, we have planned right now is on uh, 8th and 9th of April in, in, in this year, in 2010, our first uh, training session. That's a training session in uh, cardiothoracic surgery where we have invited one of the top robotic surgeons of the world who is uh, uh, by coincidence also a Belgian uh, surgeon and he's going to be the main trainer uh, when we do our, our training session. Mm -hmm. um, now we will obviously not rely only on uh, foreign trainers. Mm -hmm. We will also use the local experts, the six surgeons I spoke about, and we hope that more are to come in the future, uh, who are Qataris or working and living in Qatar mm -hmm. and who become experts in, uh, in their specialty in uh, the field of robotic surgery. Mm -hmm. We will use them as our local experts in our training programs. Mm -hmm. And of course, we also have our own staff. Uh, we have a doctor on board who is an expert in um, in surgical robots. We have a PhD and engineer mm -hmm. uh, on board who is a technical expert in uh, surgical robots. Mm -hmm. uh, we will look in the future for, for additional people. Mm -hmm. uh, so we will have our own core staff who can provide uh, at least the basic part of our training programs uh, without having to uh, use, uh, use surgeons or use top experts from all over the world. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for this interview and we wish you all the best of luck.